So now we have a special guest, um, Marcus. Hello. I'm Hello. going to go ahead and stop sharing so that you can do so. And let me find the Second. buttons. Yeah. Stop share. Um, sorry for looking confused. <laughs> okay. Excellent. You guys can hear me? Yes. Uh, obviously, the first question for every Zoom and team meeting. Um, yeah, uh, welcome. This is a presentation about a joint collaboration between Great Expectations at Microsoft. Um, I'm Marcus Guzovitz. I'm an architect on Microsoft Fabric, uh, specifically the Semantic Link team. Um, so to start with, let me give you a brief introduction of, of what Fabric is and what we're trying to achieve. So over the uh, last couple of years, the, the analytics landscape um, obviously changed and is evolving and has many, many things. And the main challenges that, that we see is uh, first, there's this struggle between self-service and a governed, um, governance needs that you want to be able to create your resources, your notebooks, whatever you have on your own, but at the same time, your IT department needs to have some control over it. Um, then there's, this, this side of thing about data, it's coming up up and again and again. And um, the idea is to provide a, a platform where we can bring all the data that you want for your analysis workflows. Um, and lastly, scale, like where you want to have a platform that allows you to work on, on small data sets, but also be able to scale up on larger ones as, as you need it. Um, and so um, we, we created Fabric, uh, which was just announced GA last week. Um, which is the combination of, of three products, um, starting with Azure Data Factory, um, where you can bring in um, in your local no-code experience data into your lake. Um, second, we are adding Spark to the mix, so you can use your big data processing for your data engineering. And finally, Power BI, so that you can show um, the reports to your decision makers um, and, and yeah, your BI logic. Now, um, we, within Fabric, um, the bottom layer is, is called one lake. It's like your one lake house that serves all the um, experiences that we and, and technologies that, that are sitting on top um, to be able to have this common data access layer, be it for data integration, be it for notebooks in your, in your data science experience, or for business intelligence on the Power BI side. Um, yeah. So um, as we're advertising, uh, you should go through medallion architecture. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this already where you refine your data through bronze, silver, and gold. And our customers already today are using great expectations to validate their data um, by accessing uh, one lake and making sure that as the data moves and gets refined through those stages, um, it adheres to the data quality requirements that they set out. Um, and they can do this within Fabric already. Now the, the element that's blank is, is the last one, which is in Power BI, there's something called semantic model or formerly called Power BI data model, uh, data set, sorry, Power BI data sets, um, which also includes business logic. Um, and semantic link is the glue layer that helps you bridge from Power BI semantic models into the Python world. Um, and specifically at that point is where we are also introducing the integration so that our customers can use great expectations to validate um, data that sits in Power BI. Now, just a brief introduction, what else Semantic Link can do. So it exposes the Power BI artifacts, tables and measures and DAX queries um, to the Python world, both um, with the Pandas interface and with Spark. Um, for the integration with um, great expectations, we've gone through the Pandas um, experience but you can also use the Spark one uh, to just feed in the Spark queries if you have the need to join the data with, with other bigger sources. So what does the great expectation integration with Semantic Link encompass? Well, first of all, um, we added the data source um, that lets you access Power BI data sets. And then once you have the data source, you can get the tables, measures, and text queries as assets, and then go on with your, with your flow what it enables you also is to not only use a code first experience, but the YAML experience. So you can be declarative um, and add all the steps. And from our perspective, a semantic link allows you to get pre-authenticated access 
to your data that sits in Power BI. Okay. Oh, doesn't like me. Ah, huh, excellent. Okay, let's have a, a brief look at the code. I hope it's big enough. Um, so um, I think for GX users that are familiar, we're trying to follow the patterns that are um, there and, and set up by great expectations. So in line eight, you see how we are adding a fabric data source uh, specifically for data sets. And then we have the assets in line 11 and 14 and 21, the assets that we're exposing. Now on the measure, I'd like to take a pause here and just try to explain what a measure is. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar. Um, it's in more technical terms, it's, it's an it's an unbound Lambda function. Um, in more practical terms, think about the sum of revenue and it's an aggregation function that you're defining. Yeah. Now that aggregation function, it could be just sum of revenue, but it could be more complicated and include filters like sum of revenue, excluding all the internal transfers that your booking might have done or whatnot. And then you have this one measure that's defined um, that gives you the right revenue number to display to your BI intelligence or whatever else you want to do. And then separately from that, you can define at what granularity you want to see the revenue. Do you want to have it stratified by time or maybe by region? Okay. So you can separate those two concerns. Um, and that's what you see here in, in, in line 14 to 18. Um, that you can access those measures. Um, and then we have some power users that want to like issue DEX expressions. And um, if you're a data scientist or more from the Python world like me, something new, um, our customers uh, on the Power BI side are very familiar with it. And one of the main things they want to do with it is they want to get access to some internal tables that allow them to understand, for example, if the data model that we have, referential integrity is, um, is to, uh, is, is properly defined and you can you can pull those this out and then define your expectation suite um, afterwards. Um, yeah, so let me just repeat, we have the data source, the free asset, and obviously you can use the same um, configurations on the YAML side. Okay. Yeah, um, questions, if there are. I don't know how, well, how you usually run this in the forum. Um, yeah, we can give time for questions. Um, we'll, we'll also post a tutorial. Um, well, I think you can push it in the chat if if, if um, folks want to follow up. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. I can make sure and post that in Slack. Um, oh, do you have the link handy now? We can share it here. Uh, let me see if I can actually figure out how to do this. <laughs> yeah, this is really great. Thank you so much, Marcus. Um, and if people think of questions, um, feel free to post them. Uh, there might be time later. So um, yeah, thank you so much. Excellent. Thanks for